So hi, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on the expected utility theorem, uh, part of our overall module here on financial decision making under uncertainty. So if you recall, in the last video, we tackled the actions of um, consumer behavior in the context of expected utility. And then we said that for as long as all of those actions are met, we can derive um, a function out of it and this function would generally exist. So let, let's talk a bit more on that and then head into our discussion on the expected utility theorem. So the expected utility function, which is the function we said we could derive if the actions were satisfied, uh, can be used to describe the individual's preferences under conditions of uncertainty. And in general, it's regarded as the von Neumann and Morgan, uh, Morgenstern function. Uh, so that's VNM for short, or more commonly, as you'll see in textbooks, as the expected utility function. So this is the function that we're going to be dealing with, well, mainly for our discussions on financial decision making under uncertainty. So before we proceed, I'd actually like to take a bit of an aside and discuss this concept called a certainty equivalent. So according to the theorem, there exists what we call a certainty equivalent. So there's this thing called a certainty equivalent of a particular gamble. So say this is the gamble X. So remember in gamble notation, you could have monetary payoff X or you could have monetary payoff Y and the probability that you get the monetary payoff X is P, right? And there exists a certainty equivalent of this gamble Y such that uh, Y is indifferent. Okay, so in this case, the certainty equivalent is equal to the monetary payoff of Y such that uh, Y is indifferent G, X, Y, P. So if you receive Y, with certainty, so you receive that with certainty, you would be indifferent between just getting that value with certainty and partaking in the gamble, right? Such that, and if you context it in terms of the utility function, the utility you get from the certain outcome Y is equal to the expected utility you get out of participating in the gamble. So remember, we have an expected utility here because again, this uh, we're not essentially sure of the actual payoff that will happen because again there's uncertainty so there are probabilities that will play a role what we are trying to say here is that there exists some value of y which is some monetary payoff y that would make the consumer indifferent between receiving that certain amount and taking the gamble right so that's the concept of a certainty equivalent and we know that the, uh, the expected utility function is defined over uncertain asset payoffs. What do we mean by this? Well, when we have this function here, again, the payoffs here, x, y, and y, x and z, are uncertain. They have a probability associated with them. So the probability that you get x is p, the probability that you get z is 1 minus p. So you are not exactly sure how much you will be receiving. That's why it's an expected utility, not a pure utility there, right? While the usual utility function, which is uh, the one we have here with Y, which is our certain monetary payoff, uh, under certainty is restricted only to individual cert uh, certain monetary payoffs, right? So we're sure of this payoff Y. And we, we call this U, U function the utility of money function. So it's the utility of money because it's a monetary payoff. And uh, each expected utility function, not, not uh, utility of money function, each expected utility function, right, has an associated utility of money function. What does that mean? Every expected utility function, which is essentially the utility function you get out of participating in an uncertain gamble, will have its corresponding certainty equivalent. So you'll have some uh, underlying that sort. Okay. So let's, let's move deeper into the theory. So the expected utility function allows for the assignment of a unit or measure, so like uh, a number, to various alternatives so that we can look at the number and know, for example, for the two lotteries, which you prefer, 
right? So for example, if the expected utility you get from gamble one is a hundred, so say that's the expected utility you get out of gamble one, uh, that's a hundred. And say you get the expected utility of gamble two and it's 50, then obviously since 100 is greater than 50, you prefer partaking inside of gamble one than you are with gamble two. Again, you're not assured that you're gonna get a higher monetary payoff from gamble one versus gamble two, but on the basis of the probabilities you were given with and the initial gamble information you were given with, you are more likely to get a better, more um, at least for you based on your preferences, a better result if you partake in GABA 1 based on this expected utility value. And in general, if we let W be an individual's random final expected, uh, final wealth after some uncertain activity, then we can write the expected utility of wealth. Okay, so W is essentially, okay, so as I'm just going to restate, it's an individual's random final wealth after an uncertain activity. Why is it random? It's because we are dealing in conditions of uncertainty, right? We have X, um, a payoff X, we have a payoff Y that could not pan out. Um, you could potentially get X or you could potentially get Y. Each of those will lead to a different final W, right? Because it's an uncertain outcome. Therefore, um, we can write the expected utility of wealth. So that's the expected utility. If we plug in the uh, a wealth value inside of the expected utility function as something that looks like the formula for an expected value in which case you just uh, um it's just the sum of all the products of the probability associated with getting a particular outcome wherein ws is uh, equal to w so you could have um, a ws equal to a w1 wherein it's your initial wealth or w1 is your initial wealth plus the payoff of x you could have that you could also have a ws which is equal to W2, which is your initial wealth plus say outcome Y. So that could be, and then you just add all of those with their corresponding probability while plugging them inside of a utility function. So as I said here, the PS uh, is the probabilities of the state of the world that you could get a particular monetary payoff and WS is the individual's final wealth given that that state occurs. So you have W1, W2, depending on the number of states in the world that you have. Okay, so let's go deeper. Take note that for any sure or certain wealth, right, the expected utility of W is equal to U, W, if, okay, uh, you are certain, you are certain, okay, about W. Okay, so if, if, the, if you were just going to get some payoff without any risk, probability is equal to one, then the expected utility is equal to the the utility function. So that's going to be that. And we are assuming ab above that W is some discrete random variable, right? So for majority of the course, we'll deal with a discrete variable, but there will be problems wherein we'll deal with a continuous random variable. And if we do that, uh, instead of taking the sum, as in statistics, we take the area under the curve, which is the integral. And this is the formula for that. Same concept applies. So let's now get into the expected utility theorem or the heart of this lecture. So von Neumann and Morgan Stern proved that under uncertainty, so under conditions of uncertainty, some rational individual will choose those uh, among gambles or different risky alternatives as if he or she wants to maximize expected utility. So the goal that we have, the goal of a consumer is to maximize, so maximize expected utility, okay, whatever that would be. And it's essentially uh, saying that uh, the consumer wants to maximize this and therefore how does it, how does a consumer do that? Well, an alternative is preferred to another if and only if it yields a higher expected utility. So you choose an outcome that will give you the highest expected utility possible, right? Based on, and that's a, what a typical rational consumer would do. Now, specifically, if individuals obey the actions we discussed in the last video of behavior in uncertain situations, they will act as if they choose the option that maximizes their expected utility. So for as long as the consumer adheres to all of those actions, 
they will act as if they choose a gamble, an option, a particular gamble that they would choose to partake in that can maximize their expected utility. Okay, so how do we sort of explain this? Well, consider two lotteries. You have uh, uh, first gamble one and you have gamble two. You have four different types of monetary payoffs and P is the probability of X1, therefore X2 is one minus P, the probability of getting X2. The probability of getting X3 is Q, then X4 is one minus Q. Okay, so we can get the expected utility by just a simple, uh, by just using the formula we discussed earlier. So the expected utility of you partaking in gamble one is just P times the utility function evaluated at the monetary payoff when you got x1 or your final wealth when you got x1 plus 1 minus p times the utility you get if you get uh, x2 as the state of the world and you receive that monetary payoff okay then the same goes for the second gamble so same process same everything now if you have a higher expected utility when you plug in the first gamble versus the second gamble, then according to the expected utility theorem, uh, theorem, you would prefer gamble one over gamble two. And in essence, that's expected utility theorem, right? So uh, just to end it all, we'll incorporate wealth on it. So because we know that a uh, consumer would have a stock of wealth probably at the beginning, although we will deal with problems wherein they have no stock of wealth, but then for the most part, they have some wealth. And in general, the wealth influences a lot of the preferences. So in general, with W being the individual's final wealth after the lottery, then the individual, right, uh, logically speaking, will prefer lottery A over lottery B if, if and only if, the expected utility of its of his or her final wealth uh, of A is greater than, uh, while participating in lottery A, is greater than his or her expected utility if he or she partake in the other gamble, which is gamble B. Now, the expected utility theorem does not suggest that the individual investor actually calculate the expected utility of its alternatives. It only posits that if the individual's behavior is consistent with the axioms of choice under uncertainty, his or her decision will be consistent with that maximization procedure. And that's, in a sense, how you incorporate wealth into it. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to discuss this concept called the suitable money function, and it's going to lead us closer to actually trying to graph out how this particular function looks like and us deriving the things that we have, the expected utility, the certainty equivalent in a more graphical manner. So thank you for your attention in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.